Hi guys, Rick Porter here, host of Cinch University, and welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna to be meeting with Jay Small, a senior account manager here in Cinch IT, and we're gonna be talking about cold calling. Jay, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, um, our pleasure. So, you know, we've talked about this before, you found a tremendous amount of success with cold calling, and, uh, you know, we wanna kinda of learn from you. We, kind of, we wanna learn, you know, what you do that makes you so successful. So my first question is, first off, why do you like cold calling so much? So for me, the thing that I like most about cold calling is the way that it allows you to um, really get a huge return on your time. So there's a lot of different ways that you can um, you know, get leads in sales. Maybe it's walking into businesses, maybe it's going to networking events or things like that, but you're never gonna be able to contact as many people as you can by just picking up the phone and, and dialing. You know, it doesn't require you to drive anywhere, doesn't require you to sit through any, you know, meetings or anything like that. You're literally just picking up the phone and, and calling people and you can talk to a hundred people in, you know, an hour or two hours, which you can't do anywhere else. Sure, so for you it's about productivity and efficiency. You get a lot more done in a shorter period of time. Exactly. Okay, makes sense, makes yeah. perfect sense. When you prepare for a cold call, is do you spend a lot of time researching the person you're trying to get a hold of or the company or do you just kind of pick up the phone and just start making calls all day long? Yeah, so it's a balance. You definitely want to have some information on who you're calling. You don't want to just call people blindly, um, but at the end of the day, you do want to pick up the phone and, and make the call. There's a saying that even a bad phone call is better than no phone call. You know, you want to be doing the actions that are going to result in, you know, positive outcomes. So you actually have to make the call eventually, but uh, you want to take a little bit of time to understand who you're calling, what you're calling about, and, and really deliver the best value. But again, you shouldn't be spending hours on this. You should sure. be able to prep for all your calls in the morning and then hammer out your calls later on in the day. When you're making those calls, are there any particular steps that you take um, when preparing for that call and when you make that call, does it go through like a, a, you mentioned an introduction and so on and so forth, other steps you take every single call or is every call completely different? Yeah, so I always take a look at the website, uh, get a good feel for what they do. There's usually an about us tab or something like that. So you can really figure out who their uh, customers are, what industry they are, uh, maybe even figure out what some of their challenges are based on your knowledge of that industry. Uh, and then I'll usually go to LinkedIn as well so that you can take a look at who you're trying to target. Maybe take a look at the names of some of the positions that they have there. You can really dial in on who you're trying to talk to and it'll make your call that much more successful than just call them blindly. Oh, absolutely, yeah. LinkedIn's a, a great resource if you use it well. Um, definitely something I think would be a whole nother topic. We could do an entire video on LinkedIn. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, another strategy, when you go to LinkedIn, if you see that you're connected with people that know people at the company you're trying to get into, I mean, you can take the cold aspect out of the call by just asking them for an introduction to who you're trying to talk to. Yeah, yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. So what does the first 30 seconds of a cold call sound like for you? No, so every call definitely starts the same way and then branches off of there depending on how the conversation goes, how receptive they are to it. Um, you know, you've got to be able to roll with the punches a little bit when you're getting into the conversation. Um, you don't want to sound too scripted, but at the beginning you should always kind of touch upon three main points, and that's the introduction. You want to tell them who you are, where you're calling from. Uh, I usually like to just use my first name, call them from Cinch IT, and then if it's somebody local, I'll say in Worcester, Mass, just to build that familiarity even further. Um, then you want to tell them the reason for your call. Just get right into it. Don't waste time. I'm uh, trying to chit chat about the weather or the news or anything um, that's just going to waste their time. You want to be respectful of that and that's going to help you build more rapport than any of those stupid questions really would at the end of the day. Sure. And then leave them with a hook or some valuable information. Uh, maybe it's industry specific, maybe it's their company specific, um, maybe it's you saw there's a common connection to somebody and you want to reference that. But uh, whatever it is, leave them with some sort of valuable hook that makes them want to continue that conversation. Gotcha. Oh, that's good advice. So do you believe in having a script or really just having that initial pitch like you talked about with that introduction um, and then kind of going from there and having more of a conversation? Yeah, so I mean, when you're first starting out, it definitely helps to maybe draft some type of script, but you want to internalize that. You want to get really comfortable with what you're trying to say, what your, um, you know, really your goal is for that call so that you've got everything 
tight. You want to have your pitch tight. You don't want to sound like you're reading off of a piece of paper. That's the worst thing you can do. Um, but you also don't want to be lost and not know where you're trying to go with the conversation. So if it helps you to have that script, which in a lot of cases when you're first starting out, it will. Uh, but don't be reading off the script. Internalize it and, and know what you want to say. Deliver it and then be prepared to roll with that phone call wherever it goes from there. Makes perfect sense. Um, you know, the, I think having, like you mentioned, having a script um, is really good when you're first starting off, right? Have an idea of what you would like that conversation to sound like at right. least and how you hope that call goes. Um, you know, cold calling is definitely something that people have a, a huge fear about, especially in our industry. Everybody likes the networking events. Everybody likes to go to lunch. Um, but picking up the phone and making those cold calls, for some reason, people have a real fear of it. Um, is, there, is there any advice that you have for overcoming that fear and getting past that? Yeah, so I mean, the first and foremost way is just pick up the phone and make the call. Uh, the longer you sit there and think about it, you're going to run through all sorts of scenarios in your head that aren't going to happen. Um, you know, n most of the time people aren't going to scream at you for the giving them a call. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and if, if they do, that's more of a reflection on them and like the type of day that they're having. It really has nothing to do with you. At the end of the day, even when somebody tells you no, they're not saying no to you, they're saying no to your offer at that specific moment in time. Um, so the first thing is don't put too much weight into the call it's just a phone call and pick up the phone and make it but also you want to make sure that you're sold on the product or the service that you're delivering or offering um, so that you're confident that you're building value when you call somebody you don't want to call somebody and feel like you're a burden or you're taking up their time or you're wasting their time you're sure. calling them because you have something that can benefit their company and if you don't believe that then you shouldn't be calling them in the first place yeah absolutely <laughs> and, and you know I think We've all run into that. Any of us that have done cold calls, we've all, we're all used to picking up the phone and kind of feeling like you're getting your teeth kicked in all day long when you're just making calls and making calls. And, and some days, you know, you book, it, it, you feel like you book, you know, every fifth call. And, and some days you book 100 or you make 100 calls and you book zero. Exactly. Um, it definitely happens. Is there, how do you keep yourself motivated on those days? So uh, I myself like to listen to podcasts, audiobooks. Uh, maybe watch a YouTube video or two and just get in the zone for the day and, and get yourself fired up. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you want to reflect on past wins. You want to reflect on those times when you did book, you know, five appointments in one call block or something like that. Because you got to remember that your ability to have success is there. Um, you're not just wasting your time with those calls. It's just a matter of catching people at the right time. And if you can reflect on those past wins, um, you can really get your belief up and you know just keep making the calls because eventually they will pay off. If you have a day of bad calls, go back and keep calling the next day and it'll probably be better, especially if the, <laughs> the day was terrible. It can't get any worse than that. But if you just stop making calls completely, you're never going to make another appointment. So you, you want to just keep the actions up, uh, keep the activity up, and it does pay off. Oh, that makes sense, yes. Yeah. So keep yourself motivated. You recommend podcasts, reading some books, watching some motivated YouTube videos, things like that, whatever, get you, get you in the mindset. For exactly, those calls. exactly. You know, luckily for me, um, I have a little bit of a commute in the morning so I can listen to an audio book or a podcast and really just get in the right frame of mind. I like to make my calls in the morning. You know, it's... They, I think Brian Tracy used to say, eat the frog, do the hardest thing yeah. uh, of the day first so that you get it out of the way. So if you can make all your calls in the morning or at least schedule time in the morning and hammer out calls, you're already way ahead of the day. And then if you happen to have time later on in the day, you can make some more and get ahead. But at least you know you've made those prospecting calls already that day. And also, a lot of the people that you're targeting things get really stressful for a lot of business owners as the day progresses and problems pop up and issues arise. If you can catch somebody in the morning, chances of them already having a terrible day are pretty low. So you, you know, I find that the conversations just tend to go better too in the morning. That makes sense. And, and so you've obviously had tremendous success over the years with cold calling. Um, and that, you know, that's why we had you on here. We wanted to kind of learn and pick your brain about what's worked for you, what hasn't worked for you and get some lessons from you. Um, what would you say is the number one lesson you've learned over the years making cold calls? I'd say the number one lesson is just to be consistent, to block that time in your schedule every day to make those calls and then to treat that time block like an actual appointment. Don't skip it. Don't go out to get coffee or to get lunch or to walk around and chat. Like That's your time block to make those calls. Make them and that consistency will pay off. Yep, makes perfect sense. Well, Jay, thanks again for ha you know coming on the show. We really appreciate you being here. Yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, hopefully, you know, 
that was helpful. Hopefully you've learned uh, some things and you picked up some stuff from Jay along the way. Uh, we appreciate you checking out the video today. Uh, if you have any suggestions, things that have worked well for you, if you have any additional questions that you would uh, like to ask of Jay as well, uh, comment down below. Uh, we, we read through those comments. Uh, we, can, we can get those questions to Jay. He can answer a lot of those questions for us. And uh, hopefully we can continue to be a resource for you. So thanks again for checking us out, and we'll see you in the next video.